NATO leaders are expected to sign off on new deterrence and defense plans to shape the Allies' response to potential attacks next week at their summit in Vilnius, the 11th to the 12th of July. But with the summit just days away, details are still a work in progress. Members are expected to approve three regional plans, which explain what each nation have to do given the geography of those regions to deter and defend, in all domains space, cyber, land, maritime, air, Admiral Rob Bauer, chair of NATO's military committee, CMC, told reporters in Brussels on Monday, the 3rd of June. Once the plans are agreed upon, NATO members and the alliance's military staff will make the plans executable through exercises and investments. At NATO's Madrid summit last year, members agreed to increase their presence on the eastern flank to deter possible attacks and increase defense readiness. Building off the Madrid summit in 2022, where members agreed to increase their presence on the eastern flank, the new force model would put 300,000 NATO troops across alliance territory with three high readiness alerts that could be deployed in 3, 10 and 30 days. Currently, those plans include around 40,000 forces under the command of NATO's Supreme Allied Commander in Europe. SACEUR, plus 100 aircraft and 27 ships in the Baltic and the Mediterranean Sea, according to SHAPE Deputy Chief of Staff Operations, Major General Matthew Van Wagenen. Work in progress. NATO's new plans have been in the works since 2018 after Russia annexed Crimea and growing concern that current measures are insufficient to match evolving security threats. We understood that NATO needed to refocus on collective defense, Bauer said. The three plans will cover all five domains air, land, maritime, space, and cyber. One plan covers the High North and Atlantic, led by the Joint Force Command in Norfolk in the U.S. A central regional plan, led by Brunson in the Netherlands, will cover the Baltics and the Alps, with the third covering the southeast of the military alliance, including the Mediterranean and the Black Sea, with a command in Naples, Italy. Once agreed, the force structure will be decided, including the number of troops and equipment on high readiness alert and the command and control structure. Last week, NATO members made a confidential pledge for a certain number of troops and equipment from their own armed forces to be placed under NATO command. The efficiency of defense plans depends on investment and recruitment in the armed forces, and all members have to work to reach a higher number of forces with a higher readiness, exercise against the plans, buy the capabilities required, recruitment, training, having stocks again, Bauer said, while not specifying what and how many resources are needed to meet the target of the plans. If all the investment is made by the nations and they have the formation we ask for, we will have full executability of the plans, Bauer said. But reaching that goal will take time, a considerable amount of years to get there, it will not be done overnight. He said that real work starts after the Vilnius summit, adding there is optimism as members are edging closer to their targets compared to previous years.
More money needed. However, Bauer also called for increased defense spending as this will directly impact the executability of plans. At the July summit, NATO members are also expected to agree to a new defense investment pledge, with 2% not as a ceiling we strive to reach, but 2% GDP as a minimum that we have to invest in our defense, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said. This pledge includes a target to invest 20% of that on equipment, but currently, most members do not meet either milestone. Bauer also said that there must be more investment in air defense as Ukraine war reminded us how crucial it is to control the sky in case of a conventional war. The Baltic states recently requested more support, including rotational air defense, on their territories, and are looking to purchase new systems. Berlin and 16 other countries will jointly procure air defense systems under the European Sky Shield Initiative, ESSI, and last month Paris called a conference to tackle the issue. Need for flexibility. Following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, NATO members on the eastern flank had asked allies to beef up their presence under the Eastern Forward Presence, EFP, framework as a deterrence move against Russia. Last week, Germany announced an increase in presence in Lithuania after previously pledging pre-positioned troops on its territory showcasing the importance of boots on the front line. But Bauer said he would be cautious not to have all the forces fixed on the eastern flank, in case the enemy comes from elsewhere, but rather expect flexibility from NATO members. In comparison to the Cold War times, the front has become much larger now as a result of our enlarged alliance, and it is in five domains, he said.